Hello, welcome to this short lecture of supporting your ideas. This lecture will go over how to use supporting material in your speech. Gathering effective supporting material is an important part of the speech writing process. Supporting material helps the audience make sense of your talking points and they hold your audience attention. So good supporting material also builds your credibility and it will provide evidence for your ideas. As you can see on the screen, supporting materials can include information such as statistics, facts, definitions, descriptions, comparisons, narratives, and testimony. Now we are going to go over some of them in detail. Statistics are the first type of supporting material that can be used in your speech. Statistics refers to the summary of numerical data that has been collected, analyzed, organized, and published in a simplified format. Statistics are the powerful form of evidence in the United States as we tend to value science and research over other forms of knowledge. For example, in a speech urging people to go to college, you could cite the research report by Baum and Ma that shows college graduates earn about 20,000 per year more than those with only high school diploma. In an, in an speech uh, explaining why we are paying so much as a gas pump, you could simply show the, the, you know, the chart uh, and showing the graph uh, with the statistics can really clarify as to uh, what is going on over the years with the price. Now we can use facts as facts refers to knowledge or information based on a real occurrence or something that is known to exist and can be independ independently verified. So did you know that the term lousy came from 14th century? And did you know that repeated injection of the saliva from body lice as they bite humans produces a slightly toxic effect of an uh, effect or an allergic reaction which makes the human feel lousy so this is this is how we can use facts in our speech facts are not only interesting they can also be used to help make your point definitions are the third type of supporting material and are used when you want to provide a statement that describes the essential property, the meaning, or the significance of a word, phrase, or idea. Thus, if you used to argue that the death penalty is immoral, you should probably begin your argument with a definition of immoral and then proceed to show how the practice of death penalty corresponds with your definition. You can use the literal definition of a term also, which provides the true factual objective meaning of something that we could find in any standard dictionary. As you can see, the example is given on the screen on Turgor, which is taken exactly from the dictionary. You can also use figurative definitions, which are metaphorical or symbolic representation that are achieved through the use of poetic language. For instance, in the book The Forever War by Joe Haldeman, the main character of William Mandela explains that life is a branch of cells walking around with the purpose. You can also use culturally generated definitions, meaning of terms such as a friend me, Google it, bromance, or other slang expressions. One such instance can be found in term the millennial generation, a term used to describe those born between the years 1981 to 2000. According to the Pew Research Center, this generation is characterized by confidence, political progressiveness, narcissism, a sense of entitlement and tolerance. 
The fourth type of supporting material that can be used is description. Descriptions provide detailed, vivid words, picture of people, places, things, events, or objects. The point of a description is to paint a picture with words. For example, radio is not as popular as it used to be. The radio is an excellent place to find talent DJs or sports announcers who can verbally provide enough details so you can vicariously experience what they are describing. Comparisons are the fifth type of supporting material. This is the act of showing or examining the similarities and differences between two things. Do you remember Governor Sarah Palin's joke where she asked, what is the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull? Lipstick. One way to use comparisons is by putting two actual objects, ideas, or entities side by side and examining the differences. For a speech about how to select a gaming system, a speaker could compare the Xbox and the PlayStation by looking at the hard drive sizes, quality of graphics, number of games available, and price of each one. In a speech on population density, a speaker could compare the population and landmass of Rhode Island with the population and landmass of Alaska. The sixth type of supporting material is a narrative. Narratives are short or long, real or hypothetical stories, or chronicles of events. If you elect to use hypothetical narratives, be sure that the story you tell is realistic and based in part or verifiable fact. The seventh and final type of supporting material is testimony. Testimony can include quotations, expert opinions, or first-hand account, accounts by witnesses. There are a number of websites and books that allow you to search for quotations by topic or by speaker, and these can be a useful tool for a speech. Testimony can be from experts like doctors, scientists, engineers, meteorologists, psychologists, and others can also be used to help support your ideas. Just make sure they are legitimate experts on the subject. But sometimes we can find experts when people live through an experience. Thank you everyone for watching this sh short lecture. Please contact me if you have any questions.